I randomly traded for a Mamiya 645 Super Medium Format camera recently. Let's see if this thing works. Look over that way. Stay, you see where that splotch is? My first test splotch. shoot was with Holly at this now dependable location. It was really bright and pretty early in the day, so I decided XR100 would be a really great choice to see how it handled not only the contrast, but also to see if I could get better color fidelity than I usually get with Portra. Nothing. Now. I shot in a variety okay, of locations, yeah. aiming mostly for open shade, but also using some dappled lighting and of course my typical backlighting. I tried not to stay in one place too long because I wanted to try this film and this camera in multiple locations okay, just to see what it had and just to test out the field of view on the lenses. And also I traded out lenses a lot more than I usually do. I With this kit, I got a 35 millimeter, 45, 55 and 80 millimeter lenses. No, no. That's a good face. All of these lenses qualify as wide angle except for the 81.9, which is also the fastest aperture 645 lens available, I believe. Maybe even in all medium format. Anyway, unfortunately that lens has a little bit of haze in it, in the back element, but I don't think I noticed much issue from it in this these early shoots. And I really loved how the color rendered on the Ektar this time. I don't think the skin tones were too orangey, and I in fact liked the punch and contrast and depth of the colors. So this is a very promising first shoot if you ask me. And on this backlit shot you can see a little bit of the haze, possibly. It's hard to tell if it's the 1.9 or, you know, the haze, but you know, I'm working on it. The brand new, ultra powerful. Mamiya 645 Super. It's haunting visage. It's lightweight, but don't get greedy. It's delicate curves. Speaking of delicate, it's also mostly plastic. It's detachable bags make it where you can be indecisive, loading multiple color and black and white film rolls, depending on what you have and how much money you have. Same with the lenses and other stuff that does things for photography mostly. Then a hand model can put it together. Look at that bright screen. The Mamiya 645 Super. It will haunt your dreams. Okay. So yeah, that's my new camera, the Mamiya 645 Super. This is the first look, by the way. I won't be going over every feature, even talking about every lens or part. This isn't as close as it feels, probably. I will, however, discuss the initial experience of using it and what I thought through these two shoots. I did do these first few shoots with Allison with Kodak Portra 400, which I'm not really getting along with lately, and I think it might just be a golden hour only film. I don't know. I've always been more fond of Portra 160, and maybe I'll give that another world next. I actually like the Ektar colors from the earlier shoot with Holly a lot more. There's a chance that it's all related to Negative Lab Pro, which I'm converting these with, but maybe my Fuji X-T3 I'm using for scanning also has a factor in it. You see a little bit of the haze from the 80-1.9 on that backlit shot, but overall, uh, once again, I can't tell if it's because of the general lens or if that's the haze. More testing is required. I love the texture and open shade of this building. I had been meaning to shoot here for a while and Allison brought it up as a potential location. That motor drive has a hair trigger, by the way. For some reason, I didn't fully anticipate how much film I'd be shooting that day. I was left with a lone roll of color film that I could rate at 100 speed, which was some uh, Kodak Pro 400-120 that expired in 1999. These are portrait shots, by the way. I got the roll of Pro 400 for a couple of bucks on Depop, of all places. I decided to rate it at 100 because it expired in 1999. Well, I hope that was good. It's the little one stop per decade thing, and I hope for the best. Actually, I wasn't disappointed. We walked over across the tracks, literally, to this little spot that I actually shot at recently with Allie. I really love the open shading texture here too. 
The greenery and all the cracked paint and the bricks and everything on the wall were really awesome. And you'll see in just a second more Negative Lab Pro results using the Kodak Pro 400. I think that's the name of it. It's kind of confusing. That's perfect right there. It's sort of a Varicolor 2 descendant. It all happened before Portra really became like the thing. But I really like it. I kind of wish they still made it. I don't know, maybe maybe one day. But you can see the color fidelity actually hauls up shockingly well. And the grain, I can't say, is related to its age more than that. it's a 400 speed film from the 90s. I like to thank my patrons listed here for supporting the channel and making all of this more and more possible. If you'd like to join for as little as a dollar a month, I'm working on perks and exclusive posts and discounts that people have taken advantage of for like things like my zine, which uh, I'm still selling for a few more days on pre-order, by the way, link in the description. Anyway, uh, back to testing out this camera, and that is more Pro 400. And once again, I'm just stunned at how this Pro 400 turned out relatively decent. It's a little desaturated, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the result is because of negative lag Pro. I don't have a straight comparison, and the film was slightly fogged from age, so I don't think it lived its life in a refrigerator, but I, I've got three more rolls, so I'm excited to shoot them. This looks great. And after that, I decided, since I was really low on color film, like I had one roll of 800 left. Let's go for drama here. I decided to shoot some Ilford HP5, trusty old HP5. I shot it at 400 because I knew at medium format it would be very fine grain and probably do really well with the latitude I was throwing at it. Stand right there. Although I think in hindsight, maybe I could have overexposed a bit more and then added contrast in post. But regardless, I'm very happy with the renditions of everything in here and how soft the background fell versus her, the contrast on Allison and her dress, which is really cool, by the way. It's a really great kind of low-key, but still busy pattern. I actually really like that the value of the sky is just a little bit darker than you might expect for the time of day. This is probably in part to HP5 and Negative Lab Pro, which I used for the conversion. Yeah. If I lived in the right place, that would be nice. If you're into film photography and enjoy behind the scenes footage of sessions and shop talk like this, subscribe and turn on notifications and you won't miss an upload and my monthly live discussions. Also, don't forget to click like on this video. And here is a really cool Mexican restaurant or former Mexican restaurant that Allison found and told me about. I love all the colors and especially the added color where they painted out the name and a local muralist had also uh, worked on the side of the building that we'll see in a second. The only roll of color film I had left here was Lomography 800, which uh, is quickly becoming one of my favorite films. Look at this really vivid color rendition and the grain is present, but to me not overly distracting. I have come to appreciate a healthy amount of grain because I shot the Fuji GFX 50S and the Hasselblad CFV 500C for I had to be close to five years and it was beautiful and I was living the no grain life was not bad at all but I kind of feel like the grain is almost the paint strokes of film so that's really grown on me and it's really grown on me through the year and you'll see more evidence of Lomography's kind of crappy backing paper job from all the burns on the edges but overall uh, if you're really careful you can mostly avoid that and I didn't mind it at all. I really like the Mamiya 645 Super. I think my favorite lenses are probably the 55 and sort of the 80. I tend to not like ultra wide angle these days. I like the 35 millimeter aspect and the 50s and that's sort of where these fall. I do need something a little bit longer for portrait, but I don't want it too long. I'm working on that next. If you have any suggestions, feel free to make them. But yeah, the winding mechanism on the little crank arm feels very flimsy, which apparently was a major force behind them upgrading it to the Mamiya 645 Pro uh, after this was released. But overall, with the winding grip, I feel pretty good about it, and I enjoyed the performance of this camera. Losing a shot versus a Pentax 645 wasn't a big deal. I feel like 
15 is a very good amount of frames to get, and these lenses are rendered beautifully. And don't forget to listen to Koi Boy, who you can find on iTunes, Spotify, and also I have a YouTube channel link for Courtney Frazier, and the other video that Courtney was in right there on the left that you can watch uh, my Florida trip from before the COVID times. Thanks. See you next week. Oh,